We would be starting with class 11 geography chapter 3 that is interior of the earth. Now most of the topics under interior of the earth we have already covered in the separate sessions. What we would be doing today is a quick recap of what we have already covered. Now to start with when, whenever a landform is forming there are two factors that, that act on it. So first is the factors that occur from the inside of the earth. We call those as endogenetic factors and the factors that are out from the outside so we call those as exogenetic factors now endogenetic factors common examples would be earthquake volcano so all these occur from the interior of the earth and we would be focusing on the factors that occur from the interior of the earth in this lecture so whatever knowledge we have is based on two types of evidences now the evidence can be direct evidence so the, when I am drilling a hole into the earth I can say what types of rocks are present. Now when we talk about the radius of the earth it is nearly 6700 kilometers deep. However a human being has discovered a maximum depth of up to 12 kilometers that ex exists in Kola in uh, Arctic, Ocean, uh, Arctic Circle. Now most of the mining activities are at a depth of 3 to 4 kilometers only. So these are some of the direct evidences we, what we can get. However, there are many indirect evidences that occur. For example, a meteor when crashes and comes onto the ground, there is a collision that occurs and that leads to a kind of uh, knowledge about the interior of the earth when you have the hole that is being dug by the meteorite. So that's a kind of indirect evidence. Then you have uh, the information based on the observations and the analysis or the estimates that you have and more importantly you have three factors that affect the knowledge that is the gravitation. Now this gravitation is more towards the poles as towards the equator. You have the magnetic field and uh, the magnetic field that occurs based on the magnetic property of the individual material that is present in the crust and finally the seismic activities. So the turret sources we have already talked about, it's predominantly the mining activity and then you have volcanic eruptions in the form of magma. Now the first thing that we will discuss today is the earthquakes. As we know the shaking of the earth's surface leads to earthquake. This is a 100% natural event that occurs. It predominantly occurs along the faults. So wherever you have the faults or you have a break in the crystal rock surface you would have the earthquake waves that would come. Now these earthquake waves originate from the center of the earth. The point where they originate is known as the focus. The point directly about the, above the focus that touches the surface is known as the epicenter. So we try to understand and record the waves that are coming. So there are some waves which would be coming from the focus and some waves which would be running on the surface. The waves which would be coming from the focus could be called as body waves and we classify those as P waves and S waves. Those running on the surface waves are again of two types. We know we call them as Rayleigh waves or L waves or love waves. Now P waves are the primary waves, S waves are the secondary waves. P waves are through the compression and expansion. So if you look at onto a spring what would happen there is compression and expansion that is occurring and that is what is P wave. So P wave is parallel to the direction of propagation. S wave on the other hand is perpendicular to the direction of propo uh, propagation. That means if I have a piece of thread and I tie it on this end and then I vibrate it. So what it would do is it would go up and down and that would be perpendicular to the direction of propagation. So that is what is S waves. S waves are also known as transverse waves. On the other hand P waves are compressional waves or longitudinal waves. So this is the basic idea when we talk about earthquakes. Now earthquakes can be measured by an instrument which is known as seismograph. When we say P waves and S waves. The unique characteristic of S wave is S waves cannot pass through liquid. So they can only pass through solid. As a result, all the area beyond 105 degrees would be a shadow zone for S waves. However, P waves are not able to penetrate the sections of the region which lie between 105 to 145 degrees. 
beyond that and before that you have penetration of the s waves that occur now how do we measure there are various types of earthquakes but before that we will understand how do we measure earthquake there are two things that we understand about earthquake first is the magnitude and other is the intensity when we say magnitude it's the amount of heat energy released from the interior of the earth and it is measured on a richter scale which varies from 0 to 10 on the other hand you have mercilli scale which talks about intensity of the earthquake that is the visible changes that we can see because of the earthquake and it is uh, range on a scale of 1 to 12 so these are the two basic differences now coming on to the types of the earthquake earthquake can be induced by various uh, methods first is the tectonic activity that's the vibration of the uh, caused by the seismic activity so sliding of rocks fault creation or are all examples of tectonic earthquakes then you have volcanic earthquakes which occur near the source of volcanic regions so the regions along pacific ring of fire would have volcanic earthquakes if there is a mining activity there that is going on there would be sudden collapse uh, of a mining area and that would lead to collapse earthquake similarly if someone is building a huge dam or a huge reservoir there can be reservoir induced earthquake and finally you would have a explosion uh, induced earthquake which would occur in the areas of chemical explosion or nuclear explosion now what are the effects of the earthquake i can say the first six that are given here are the effects that are directly visible on the landform and the below six are the effects that affect the common man or the individual so i can say shaking of the ground surface uh, demolition of the settlements soil liquefaction ground lurching would all be the examples of uh, the landform that is affected however as a result of the earthquake there can be floods if it's close to the river area there can be fires there would be structural collapse or damage to building and people again there would be objects that would be falling or toppling down and if it is close to the water areas or if it is beneath the water we call those as tsunamis now the next topic that we would be talking today is the interior of the earth interior of the earth is predominantly classified under three heads the outermost layer which is known as crust the middle one which is known as mantle and the center one which is known as core both core and mantle could further be divided as upper and inner so you would have upper and inner and both the inner of mantle and core would be solid however the upper would be liquid so upper mantle and upper core are liquid however inner mantle and inner core are solid now the crust is the outermost layer the thickness of the crust in case of ocean is less as compared to the continent so continent is much thicker uh, in case of crust it goes up to 30 kilometers however the oceanic crust is only 5 kilometers so these are some of the basic facts you have for the mental and the core again one of the important aspects for mental is the upper part of the mental is known as asthenosphere and this asthenosphere would be of use when we would talk about this in the next chapter that is plate tectonics so under plate tectonics we would understand the concept of asthenosphere the next is volcanoes now volcanoes as we know are sudden eruption of the magma material which are, comes again from the asthenosphere or the mental area and this can be of various types so there can be a sudden explosion which can run on to kilometers and kilometers and there could be other which could just flow down with the mountain itself or collapse in the mountain itself so all those are known as uh, the various types of uh, volcano now what comes out of a volcanic uh, region is known as the magma so magma rises out the hot magma rises out and finally it's the lava that comes out the shield volcanoes are the most common and as I, as I said there are various types of volcanoes so under shield volcano what would happen is they would run along with the volcano itself so they would create a kind of small uh, plateau that could be seen 
composite are much more explosive so you would have viscous lava in the form of pyroclastic materials that would come out caldera is further explosive as compared to composite finally in case of deccan plateau in india you have the flood basalt lava that goes on to distances and is simply ac um, accumulated in the region then within the ocean within the uh, let's say you have the north america here and the africa here you have the mid atlantic ridge now within the mid atlantic ridge or the mid oceanic ridges that exist throughout the globe you would have frequent volcanic eruptions that would be seen uh, in the uh, ridge itself and then you have the volcanic landforms which are seen above the surface which are known as extrusive landforms and those which are seen within the surface which are known as intrusive landforms now these intrusive landforms can further be divided into various types plutonic are those which are established towards the lower most section, uh, sections or they cool in the deep layers batholith are again seen towards the lower most section so they occur as a plutonic deposits that could be seen here now lecolith are deposits that could be seen towards the higher ranges and they have a kind of pipe or conduit that connects it with the batholith you have lepolith which are kind of uh, saucer shaped depressions fecolith are lens shaped structures which are uh, kind of uh, protruded up then you have silts which are thicker as compared to sheets which are thin and finally you have dike which are kind of vertical arrangements or vertical connections with the volcanic material so with this we cover the volcano and the chapter 3 in the next class we would be talking about chapter 4 where we will see about the origin of the earth and the distribution of oceans and land uh, on the earth surface you can subscribe to our channel for more details have a good